you need to be willing to do something that everyone else is not willing to do. Getting ahead of 99% of people in the world would simply mean that you have to be different. It sounds obvious, I know, but lately there's been tons of videos on YouTube claiming to make you more successful than 99% of people. And guess what? It's all the usual stuff. Have goals, be disciplined, remove distractions, and something called the monk mode. Elon Musk didn't just succeed because he had goals. A writer has goals. Someone who works in construction is disciplined. And everyone is already trying to avoid distractions. These aren't things that 99% of people don't do. And as for monk mode, just look at the most successful people out there. None of them are living like monks. Also, Here's the thing. If an action is common, like the stuff you see in hundreds of YouTube videos, it's not going to set you apart from 99% of people. To be more successful than everyone else, you have to do what others don't. It's about finding and doing the uncommon and not just following the standard advice. Now look, YouTube is flooded with productivity videos and they all promise to tell you the next life change secrets. These videos get millions of views, mostly from people caught in a false sense of productivity, stuck in a dopamine loop. And when they try to be productive, they often fail, blinded by the illusion of productivity, and they end up wondering why they haven't achieved anything. If you're okay with a normal life, not reaching your goals, then this isn't for you. But if you want to know the principles that changed my life, which helped me achieve levels of productivity I never thought possible, keep watching. I've been on YouTube for over five years now because I had other channels prior to this one. It was always my dream to turn it into a career. Despite it being my passion and my main goal, I struggled for years because I was constantly distracted and inefficient. So this lack of focus not only drove me away from the development of my video making skills, but also slowed down the growth of my channel. I didn't have a specific strategy. I just had vague ideas like making videos or going to the gym. Eventually, I learned about dopamine and how it impacted my focus and energy. But before I could climb to the top, I hit rock bottom when I got hooked on gaming and social media. I knew deep down that I was holding back on my dreams for quick dopamine fixes. This obsession lasted for months when I eventually quit. That's when my true journey of self-improvement began. I started to want more from life because I was setting clear goals and feeling a sense of urgency and purpose. But becoming super productive didn't happen instantly. Since I've been focusing more, my direction is clear and I've made incredible progress. So here, are some productivity mistakes you're likely making and how to fix them. Mistake number one is that you're caught in a dopamine trap. This isn't just about wasting hours on TikTok. This dopamine trap is something more stealthy, disguising itself as something beneficial. You first have the educational content trap. I used to listen to educational podcasts and YouTube videos all day thinking I was being productive, but this constant intake of information often left me feeling accomplished without actually completing any tasks. It's good to learn new things, but it's better to separate learning from working. For example, I might read a bit in the morning, listen to a podcast while going to the gym, and watch a YouTube video before going to bed. But when it's work time, I focus on my main goals. When consuming content, I take one key idea, write it down, and let my mind work on it, rather than endlessly consuming more and more content. You also have another dopamine trap, which is constantly talking about your goals without making real progress. We all know someone who's always discussing their big plans, but never seems to get anywhere. They get a dopamine hit just from talking about their goals, which tricks their brain into feeling rewarded as if they were actually working. To avoid this, you need to find pleasure in completing tasks and not just talking about them. I'll explain later in the video how you can start finding joy in the work itself, so keep watching. Mistake number two is that you're not doing any deep work or entering a flow state. Deep work is just a concept and it's about being undistracted, uninterrupted and engaging in hyper-focused work at your highest mental capacity. Deep work isn't doing normal tasks like cleaning up your house or going to class on time. Instead, it's when you're learning, mastering, or applying a skill to boost your output. Deep work is simple in theory. Focus as hard and as long as you can. The result will simply be your highest quality work. Engaging in deep work also often leads to a flow state. Deep work is the action, but flow is a state of mind. In a flow state of mind, unnecessary parts of your brain shut down. You don't feel tired or bored and you become completely immersed in what you're doing. So in simple terms, you're in the zone. This balance between the challenge of the task and your skills is important. The task shouldn't be too easy that it's boring, nor too difficult that it's frustrating. That's why flow state typically happens during deep work sessions. And the best part is that when you're in this high efficiency state, you actually start enjoying the work itself because you're aware of how productive you are. The third important productivity mistake is multitasking, which is basically a myth. When you think you're multitasking, you're just 
just rapidly shifting your focus between tasks, which destroys any chance of achieving deep work and flow state. Multitasking is bad because it prevents you from being fully engaged in a single task. It's like trying to run in multiple directions at once, which means you're not gonna get very far. Flow state is essentially a form of mindfulness because being mindful makes it easier to enter flow state. While deep work and mindfulness sound simple, they are challenging to master in our information saturated world. We're constantly bombarded with data through our devices, social media, and instant messaging, and this constant stream of information makes it hard to focus. So to combat this, keep your phone on silent and out of sight while working, minimize interruptions, and dedicate your attention to one task at a time to truly harness the power of deep work and flow state. Now the fourth and final mistake is that you're simply not seeing yourself as a productive person. You might have goals, but deep down you don't truly believe in your ability to achieve them. This negative self-image can lead to subconscious self-sabotage, slowing down your productivity. The first step to rewire your brain might sound a bit repetitive, but it's backed by science and what I'm talking about is visualization. Write down your long-term goals, then clearly imagine achieving them. Visualize the version of yourself who made it happen. When you fully engage in this visualization and feel the emotions as if you've already succeeded, your brain starts to believe it. Over time, this exercise helps you subconsciously see yourself as that successful version. The second step is providing justification for this new self-image. This means taking actions to become more productive, which further convinces your mind that you are indeed that capable, productive person. As you implement strategies to boost your productivity, it reinforces this new, positive self-perception, moving you away from the unproductive mindset you had before. And sometimes all you need to do when you're working really hard is simply take a break in between what you're doing. But don't get trapped in another dopamine loop by grabbing your phone and scrolling through social media in the middle of your work. What's interesting about it is that you can engage in deep work for an hour, but it doesn't take an hour break to recharge yourself and continue working. You can easily take a five minute break and that alone will free up some of the frustration you may have and allow you to get back into a flow state of mind. Another thing you can do is also reward yourself for every milestone of work that you get done. And here you can actually go and do something fun. You can tell yourself, this is my reward for all that hard work that I've done to achieve this milestone. This is a great way to get your efficiency to reach its maximum potential. You just engage in deep work and reward yourself every now and then. At the end of the day, you will find that you've done an incredible amount of work that you only thought you could do in a week or a month. Now let's get into the solutions I have for overcoming the mistakes I talk about in this video. Step one to getting ahead is to become extremely competitive. The idea that it's the taking part that matters doesn't hold up in reality because our education system, which often promotes this thinking, fails to prepare the youth for real world challenges. The goal should be to win, not just to participate. Think about this, if you had a friend do your homework in school, you'd be called out for cheating. But in the business world, hiring a financial expert to handle your numbers is seen as a smart move. The education system's approach is often the opposite of what's required in real life. Moreover, social media, particularly platforms like Instagram, complicates matters by exposing people to the lives of the top 1%, and this ends up creating unrealistic benchmarks and aspirations. The days when the path was straightforward are gone, where you would just finish school and get a job, then buy a car, find a partner, purchase a house, and start a family. Now, success is not just a bonus, it's a necessity. My point is that the world is now tougher than ever, and if you're determined to succeed and stand out, you need to be very skilled and insanely competitive. Step two is about becoming a creator. And I don't necessarily mean a content creator or a social media influencer, but the world operates on a balance of consumers and creators. Consumers engage in activities like watching entertainment, purchasing products, and sometimes accumulating bad debt, which in turn benefits the 1%. It's a simple truth. If nobody buys what you create, you can't become wealthy. Falling into consumer mode is easy because it's almost hardwired into us. We naturally gravitate towards scrolling through our phones, watching TV, and buying the latest technology and gadgets because everyone else is doing it. Some suggest entirely cutting out consumer habits and adopting a monk mode lifestyle. This involves things like daily meditation, no drugs and alcohol, and regular exercise. Personally, I find the concept of monk mode a bit extreme and unrealistic. Strict rules like the ones influencers talk about could drain the joy from life. However, I do believe in the principle behind it. I see it as a sliding scale with creator at one end and consumer at the other. Throughout my life, I've always tried to tilt the scale 
scale more towards being a creator. When I was 14 or 15, I skipped parties that didn't matter much to me and instead focused on trying to build an online business because even a slight shift towards the creator end can put you ahead of most people as the majority aren't even aware that they're living entirely in consumer mode. Step three is to become hyper obsessive. I've always disliked the phrase work-life balance. When you're trying to get ahead, balance can be an illusion. People are more driven than ever and to stand out, you need to be utterly fixated on your goals. Remember, there is always someone ready to outwork you. The concept of balance often becomes an excuse for not pushing hard enough. You should desire success as much as you need to breathe, just like you see in those motivational videos. This mindset is similar to an athlete's mentality and I see business as the ultimate sport that only improves with age. When I was building my online businesses, I never let myself forget my goals and I even told most of my friends that my work would always be my priority. This might sound extreme, but it was necessary for me to ensure that I wasn't held back by others who didn't fully support my ambitions. A simple yet effective technique I used was writing down all my aspirations on sticky notes and attaching them to my mirror. Every morning, they were the first thing I saw, reminding me of my targets and keeping me accountable. Step four is the lack of structure. This was a big problem for me since I used to just wing it every day. My brain was both distracted and directionless, and I didn't even set aside specific times for deep work. Once I introduced structure and made deep work a part of my routine, my productivity went through the roof. From what I know, there's four types of scheduling for deep work. The first is something called seclusion, and this is the most intense approach where you cut out almost all shallow work to focus almost entirely on deep work. It's like when rappers disappear for months to focus solely on their music. However, this method is unrealistic for most due to jobs and other responsibilities. The second type of scheduling for deep work is periodic scheduling. Here, you pick out chunks of your week, month, or year exclusively for deep work. These periods should be at least a full day to achieve maximum intensity. I find this method effective and often combine it with the third type, which is daily scheduling. This one is pretty common because it involves setting aside the same block of time each day for deep work. It's more realistic for building a habit as you're dedicating a consistent daily period to focused work. However, since it's not a full day, you might not reach the highest level of focus. The final type of scheduling is flexible scheduling, and this is the most adaptable but least effective method where you fit in deep work whenever possible. It's challenging to maintain due to the constant mental shifting required. This method suits those with extremely unpredictable schedules. Besides these scheduling types, you can add structure to your life by setting specific internet times, following strict deadlines, and if you're up for it, planning every minute of your day. While you might not always stick to such a schedule perfectly, it provides a framework to work within, and then it's just a matter of discipline to follow through. Now listen, if you're serious about improving your productivity, you should consider joining the inner circle. It's a platform I've created for people who want to make money online, get into self-improvement, and get into their best shape possible. The cost to access this platform is just $25 and it offers a section dedicated to fitness and diet, which I've put together for those looking to get into their best physical shape. There's also over 12 courses on making money online, all designed by me. It's a great resource for anyone looking to enhance their skills in online money making, personal fitness, self-improvement, and even networking. A main takeaway from this platform is that you will get to meet lots of like-minded individuals and you can easily help each other up whenever you need. So make sure to check out the inner circle with the link in the description. I strongly believe it's a valuable resource that you don't want to miss out on. And by the way, if you want to see how I got ahead of everyone in 2023 and made $100,000 at just 19 years old, make sure you watch this video right here. I basically go into all the ways that I used to make money and even talked about which of them worked out the best for me and which ones didn't. So make sure you watch that video to know which business models actually work in terms of making money online. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this and leave a comment with your thoughts on today's video.